We're doing a follow-up video here on this dual X79 motherboard. Uh, as you can see, I did get these uh, two deep cool coolers mounted on there. Um, I just had to kind of adjust the uh, height of the fan. As you can see, I mounted it just a little bit higher there as well, just so it does not uh, interfere with the memory modules there. But yeah, we got everything up and running, 32 gig of RAM. I checked in CPU-Z already, it's running in dual channel. Um, I do have a 750 watt gold rated uh, EVGA power supply there and the reason I'm using that is because it has the uh, two uh, CPU 8 pins, one of them there and the other one down there. Uh, but yeah, we're going to hop into Windows here. You can see we've got 16 cores, 32 threads, uh, 32 gig of RAM here, then just my test drive and a GTX <coughs> 1070. Let me uh, open up Cinebench R, um, let's see, I believe this is R20. <clears throat> and while that's loading, I'll open up CPU-Z here, and uh, yeah, we'll quickly go over what CPU-Z says we're picking up with this motherboard, and the processors, yeah, so there are two processors, this is in socket 1, we can swap to socket 2 there, same kind of deal, everything seems to be turboed up pretty high right now, um, but yeah, two E5 2650 V2s, for memory, we've got everything's running in dual channel, which is actually not too bad. Dual channel works just fine. Quad channel obviously is better, but for the price, like I'm not going to pay $50 more for a motherboard just to get that quad channel feature because yeah, it just eats into the cost. And I'll try to overclock the Samsung memory in the BIOS to 1866. Right now it's running at 1600 megahertz, but um, yeah, if you're wondering for the bench here, if I just stress the CPU, we're getting about 6100. Uh, for the multi-thread performance there. I'll just stop that because that's about what you can expect. Um, yeah, the nice thing is these CPUs run really cool, 22 nanometers. Uh, but yeah, let me just run this uh, R20 here. As you can see, I ran a benchmark test already, so we scored at most about 43.69, which is pretty uh, pretty cool for this dual Xeon setup. And especially with this motherboard, it, it makes it really, really budget friendly. Um, but yeah, one thing that I will mention is there's no way you can can control the uh, fan speed with this motherboard. So I don't know if you can hear, but it's pretty loud. Well, it's not too loud, honestly. Um, it's it's really bearable. Like some of the workstations I work with are are a little noisier than this. So once you get it in a case and it's all closed up, this is very workable, <laughs> and especially for the price. Like I think I paid 115 for the motherboard, but. Uh, basically about 30 bucks uh, with tax per uh, CPU cooler and uh, so yeah just on their own there so that's about uh, 60 there 115 and then of course we got the two CPUs which I paid about $85 a piece for so 170 plus 115 we're looking at I don't even know like two so for the whole build right here with memory and everything we're just under about just under I think $400 or something I can't do quick math but yeah everything runs super cool because we've got, a, yeah, they're really big CPU coolers there. And, uh, yeah, we're done the R, R20 run now. 4370 is the score we got. I'm not going to run the single core performance score. But, yeah, I thought I would just quickly do a video there uh, demonstrating the performance. And, as well, we can quickly open up MSI Afterburner, which will have the temperatures of the CPUs. Hang on, let me just scroll down a bit. Here, so, yeah, some of the CPU temps under full load, 29 degrees. Like, I mean, it's really cold where I am. This is all Celsius, so where I'm working right now, it's like, yeah, probably if it's getting to about 17 degrees, it's probably about 17 degrees ambient here, because these are huge CPU coolers, so yeah, under full load, uh, can you say, <laughs> for your own setup, under full load, does your CPU stay under 30 degrees? Yeah, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> Mine sometimes goes up to 80 when I had my old i7, but yeah, same deal for the second CPU, uh, about 30 degrees there. And yeah, this makes a really solid budget option for streaming. I will be testing out the motherboard some more, and then I will be putting it in a nice deep cool case. As well, I'll probably try a running dual RX 570s, see if there's one game that supports uh, Crossfire, and see how that goes. Or maybe even for video editing, because uh, it turns out I think it's a full X16 slot there, so we're set. And then, of course, I am just using my test drive, which is a uh, budget brand. It's Sunbow. They're also a really gay, great brand. There's a couple of them that I use. There's a Kingdian, Torusus or something, and uh, Sunbow. All three of them are good SSD brands there. But yeah, I'm going to end the video there. It's just a quick look at our dual Xeon setup. 
with our uh, budget money board. If you guys have any questions, uh, let me know. And I will be, I guess you can already see on my channel that there are some test streams done with this exact setup. Uh, not same motherboard and parts, but I used a Dell workstation, but same specs. So we had 32 gig of RAM, the dual E5, 2650 V2s. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, definitely uh, drop them down below in the comments. But yeah, I believe this will be my new favorite kind of build to go after. This will be going after like the streaming and video uh, content creation market there because you got 16 cores, 32 threads, 32 gig of RAM. If I had 16 gig modules, that could be 64 gig RAM, but uh, yeah, with the 1070, it's a perfect setup.